Hello, God bless you. Thank you so much for checking out this teaching video. And if you have a Bible, I want to encourage you to find 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. And in this message, we're going to be talking about consistency in the faith. I wonder if you were to ask yourself, oh, how consistent am I in my walk with Christ? Now, obviously, I'm asking that to uh, Christians, followers of Christ. You may or may not be a follower of Christ. I still want you to hang with me. If you stumbled upon this video, I, I just pray that you would hang with me throughout this entire message. Because it is no secret that there are Christians, professing Christians, who are inconsistent. And when Christians are inconsistent, in their faith, there lies the danger of going back to live like the old man, the old person, the old creature, right? We must try to avoid to go through those seasons when sometimes we're seeking after the Lord or, or, and, and sometimes we're not. We, th this idea of, of swaying back and forth where, you know, I'm seeking the Lord uh, during certain seasons of my life. No, we're, we're called to seek after the Lord all the time. And what does God require from you? If you are a follower of Jesus Christ, what does God require from you? One word can really sum it up, but you need to know what that entails. The word is faithfulness. God wants faithfulness from you. And let me add another word for clarification with this message this morning. God wants consistent faithfulness. For those of you that are married, imagine at your wedding, the person you're getting married to decided to write his or her vows. And when it was time for the wedding vows, your soon-to-be spouse says, I promise to be loving and faithful to you for 75% of our marriage. How would you react to that? <laughs> I wonder if you'd say, uh, a preacher, can I get a time out here? Can we, can we talk about this right now? Is it, is it too much to ask for a promise <clears throat> from your spouse to be 100% faithful to you? No, because marriage is built upon faithfulness. It is built upon trust. The Bible says love always trusts. Love is faithful. Now, let me tell you something about God. God is perfectly faithful. Do you understand that? Do you understand that, that we serve a faithful God? And this is why the Bible tells us to, to feed on his faithfulness. It says that in Psalm 37, verse 3. And then it says in verse 4, delight yourself in the Lord. Feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord. He is faithful to us. And if he is faithful to us, how dare we commit spiritual adultery against him? Why do professing Christians appear to think that it is okay if, if we're only 75% faithful to God? If Christians are not careful, we can get on that level of abusing God's faithfulness rather than feeding on God's faithfulness. Now, I do not define faithfulness as only the faithful dedication uh, of assembling together when, you know, as we gather. I, I do believe it certainly testifies to your faithfulness, no question about it. But I've noticed that there are a lot of uh, professing Christians who measure faithfulness by just simply the attendance of church services. Now, that's extremely important, but I also think it is fair to point out, you know, I know at our local body, it's something that 
we're navigating through. Um, I remember letting you know that um, around Christmas time, my wife got COVID, my son got COVID, and and you know it's it, it's happening in in our community, it's happening in our churches. Um, so I also I think it's fair to point out that COVID has brought interesting challenges to the church. It is true that there are folks who are that are more vulnerable than other folks, and and it is understandable that people need to be cautious. Now, whether we're talking about the vulnerable population or uh, those who need to quarantine for so many days or, or those who get sick and, and have to hang back, there are people who cannot come to church for whatever reason. Now, I, I sure pray it's a good reason, okay? But my point is that, yes, there will be times when we can't assemble with others and prayerfully it's just a, a short season of that. So... I want to approach this message in two ways as we're talking about consistency in the faith. Number one, I do want us to first understand the great importance of assembling together and being involved in a local body of believers. And if you do have to go through that kind of season where whether you're sick or, or have to hang back, I pray it is only temporary and I pray that you want to be quick to return as soon as you can. And number two, I want us to seek to maintain a consistency in our faith, even when we cannot assemble for whatever reason. And by no means is number two a reason to not assemble with other believers. Here is my heart with this message. I, I, think, I think many Christians do not understand how easy uh, it can be to drift away from God. Now, let me be clear that God is never uh, the one drifting away from us. We are the ones that drift away from him. We see this in James 4, 8, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. That's very important that you understand. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts you double-minded. One of the reasons why the assembling together with your church family is so very, very crucial and essential is because the assembling together with other believers cultivates revival in your life. We seek to get equipped and, and prepared uh, to resist the devil, to be sanctified, and, and to resist the sinful temptation of this world. Every disciple who is consistent in their faith, they understand the importance of, of assembling with other believers, even though there may be a, a time or a situation where they cannot for whatever reason. Now, I, I am thankful for the technology uh, that allows me to do this. But again, this can never be a sufficient substitute. And I'm talking about the teaching videos. So I want us to look at Hebrews 10, 24 and 25, and I want you to stay with me because I'm going somewhere with this. Hebrews 10 verses 24 and 25 says, and let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as in the manner of some, but exhorting one another. And so much the more as you see the day approaching. So you see, my friends, we, we assemble for a purpose. We want to seek our Lord together, worship together, grow together. We want to stir up love and good works with one another. And we want to see lost people saved. We want to get equipped in the defense of our faith and the practice of our faith. Now, if you want consistency in your faith, then you need to get this, okay? We want to be in training as a disciple rather than trying to be a disciple. Did you catch that? We want to be in training as a disciple rather than trying to be a disciple. Do you understand that there's a big difference between training and trying? When you are training, you are all in. And you are focused on your desired outcome. 
If an athlete wants to compete in the uh, Ironman triathlon, for example, it's, a, it's, a, it's an extremely intense race. So if an athlete wants to compete in that race and complete that race, they can't just try to finish the race without training to finish the race. Are you with me? Now, what is it that the Father wants in you as a disciple? I, at the beginning, I, I said faithfulness, but let me take that one step farther. He wants you to be conformed to the image of his son. Jesus was perfectly, is perfectly faithful to the Father. So for us as Christ followers, we need to grow into Christ likeness. He's our example. He's our master. He's our, he's our Lord. He's our savior. And think about it. In order to be conformed into Christ likeness, you must do that through the power of the Holy Spirit. You cannot simply try to do that yourself. You see, when we simply try to do something, you're, you're not all in. And, and you're not determined to reach your goal. If you, let, let, me, let me throw this at you. If you simply say things like, I'm going to try to lose weight. Or I'm going to try to get out of debt. Or I will try to be more faithful in serving the Lord. You're not all in when you say things like that. If that's your attitude. You will not be consistent if you're just simply trying to do something. Are you with me? When a believer lacks consistency with assembling with other believers, and this is why we talk about the essential element of it. Now, again, I, may, I, I threw out the disclaimer. I understand that there are times when we can't assemble for whatever reason, and prayerfully, that's just for a certain season. But I, it, it also concerns me um, when people... Uh, do stay away for long period for a long period of time. The danger of that is the world. It will allow the world to bombard them and influence them in a negative way. Now, what about those who want to be consistent in making it to church but cannot? And let me let me make it clear: cannot for whatever reason. Members of our church family. We've, we, we've been seeing it and we have seen it. Members of our church family may have to go through long-term long -term sickness of some kind or, or have surgery or get older and cannot get around like they used to. And yes, here we are and uh, we just got through 2020 and here we are at the beginning of 2021. Um, and yes, even have to quarantine because of COVID. Things happen, okay? Now, even when these kinds of things happen, you can still maintain a level of consistency in the faith. Every believer must seek to maintain a level of consistency. And, and the reason why we're in 2 Timothy is because I want us to see what the Apostle Paul writes to young Timothy through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. It's very important, okay? Look at 2 Timothy chapter 3, beginning in verse 10. It says, but you have carefully followed my doctrine. So remember, the Apostle Paul, uh, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, is writing to Timothy. But you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to me at Antioch and Iconium at Lystra, which persecutions I endured, and out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. But evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Verse 14, but you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of knowing from whom you have learned them and that from childhood you have known the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation 
through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. That you see, the heart of a true disciple is to follow the commandments of God in whatever situation we are in. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. We are called to honor and worship him in good times and in bad. Remember, we're called to be faithful. When you gave your wedding vows to your spouse, didn't you promise to be loving and faithful in good times and in bad? in sickness and in health, till death do we part, right? Now you take, you take Paul, Paul the apostle, he was the mentor to young Timothy. And Paul knew the importance of leading by example and being someone who practiced what he preached. And we as disciples must understand the importance of leading by example for our children, for others in this local body, and, and uh, perhaps uh, if you're not part of this local body and you're watching this, I pray that you are involved in a local body of believers. We are to lead by example with, with every person we come in contact with. And this is why Paul says, when he says my doctrine or my teachings, remember he is the apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ. So he is teaching the, the doctrines of God. He is teaching the principles of Christ, the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we are to keep to the teachings of God. In, in manner, as he puts it, in manner of life, purpose, faith, patience, love, persecutions, and afflictions. Now, you may be watching this and think, well, well hold, hold up, hold up, preacher. Did he say even in persecutions and afflictions? Yes. Yes, he did. He, he even goes a step farther in verse 12. All who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Yes, in persecutions and afflictions. We are to remain faithful to God. We can add in sickness and in health, in death and in life. Jesus is our savior and our mighty fortress. We will not be moved as we remain in him. You see, the consistency in the faith is about abiding in Christ every day and all day. To abide in Christ is to remain in him, to stay with him, to rest in him, to honor him, to love him, to worship him, to pray in his name, to walk by faith. And, you know, think about it. This is this is where I'm going with this. All the things that I just said, you can do that any place at any time. Consistency in the faith is not about religion. It is about complete and total devotion to him because he is our bridegroom and we are his bride. And scripture makes that kind of analogy. And it certainly fits because we are to honor and obey our bridegroom as believers and praise God, we will be at the marriage supper of the lamb. Hallelujah. I pray that we want to be washed and renewed and purified as the bride of Christ. Paul says to Timothy, you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, and that from childhood you have known the holy scriptures praise God, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. And Paul also says, beware 
He talks about those evil men and imposters who are trying to deceive us. And notice the emphasis and the context, okay? Because how, how, do, we, how do we spot these imposters and these evil men? By knowing the Holy Scriptures. You see, God has given us a roadmap in the direction we need to go. God has shown us what wisdom and truth is all about. God has revealed his ways to us and we must follow. We must be all in for Christ in this culture. That's the only way we can make an impact. This culture is on sinking sand, beloved. But when you are a follower of Christ, he is our rock. Do you all remember that classic children's story, the three little pigs, right? What happened in that story? Well, uh, the first two pigs, they built their house with straw and sticks. The third pig built his house with brick. And the big bad wolf came. And you remember the big, big bad wolf. He says, I will huff and puff and blow your house down. He succeeded with the first two, but not with the third. Because the third was in a strong house with a sure and solid foundation. Well, Satan and these false teachers are these big bad wolves, friends. Even wolves in sheep's clothing. They speak the Christian jargon, but they do not stay true to the word of God. And if you want to be able to spot false teachers, something you want to pay attention to, pay very close attention to. Look closely and examine how they lift up Jesus and how they lift up the Holy Word of God, the Bible, the Holy Scriptures. See, many of them will discredit the Word of God in some way or, or claim to have the interpretation themselves. False teachers pick and choose verses to, to justify their, their sinful habits and desires. For them, the interpretation of scripture is selective. They try to appear superior to their listeners. Some claim an experience that, that elevates them to a quote unquote higher level, while others profess a more advanced spirituality that no one else could ever achieve. That is not biblical Christianity. All followers are part of the priesthood of our Lord. Now, yes, God does call people with different gifts to different positions. Yes, that's clear. But this idea that, oh, you know, you need to, you need to listen to me because I am, you know, high and lifted up and I, I have all of this figured out. No, no. We, you know, what did, what did Paul tell Timothy? Preach the word, okay? Preach the word. If, if I am a minister of the gospel, I am called to preach the word in season and out of season. I need to convince, rebuke, and exhort. And the word of God is, is all sufficient. All I got to do is preach it. Yes, I got to handle it carefully. I got to make sure and prayerfully seek through this and prepare. All that's important. But my point is I must preach the word. And why should we preach and stay true to the word of God? Well, Paul clearly answers that question in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. Notice this. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. You see, when Paul talks about that scripture uh, is given by the inspiration of God in the Greek, he uses the, the word theanustas. It, 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 it means God breathed. We can trust scripture because it is God breathed. It came from God. It did not come from man. And in the context of this passage, Paul talks about uh, those who turn away from the faith in the last days. He, he talks about that uh, toward the beginning of chapter number three. He talks about those who are filled with pride and selfishness and lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. 
People try to make God in their, make God out to, make up God in their own minds. They, they believe in things that God never said because they are not studying his word and they are not applying his word to their lives. They are not letting the Holy Spirit lead their decision making and guide their tongues and thoughts and actions. God wants you to be consistently faithful to him and it all begins with you surrendering your entire life to the Lord Jesus. He died for you, he shed his blood for you, and he is the only all-sufficient savior. Nobody else can save you from your sins. You can't save yourself, for it is by grace you've been saved. It is the gift of God, not of works. You are, the Bible says we are saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. You, you, you need to understand that we're talking about a spiritual regeneration. In order to get trained into Christ's likeness, you have to first be born again. And that means born through the power of the Holy Spirit, born from above. And that comes when you repent of your sins and surrender your life to Jesus Christ. You present yourself a living sacrifice to him and he will save you. But you gotta stop doing it your way and trust in what he says in his word. You have to give your whole heart to him. He's such a good God. He's such a faithful God. He's always faithful to us and we need to be faithful to him. As I said, we can't, we can't commit spiritual adultery to him. We gotta be faithful to him. You can't serve God and serve this world at the same time. You can't serve God and serve your own passions at the same time. And when you surrender all to him, he will change you. He will redeem you. He will pour out his spirit upon you. He will make you a new creature. And I'm telling you, it is the best decision you could ever make. I love him so much. He's so good. He's so wonderful. He makes me wise and he, he shows me how to live. He shows me how to be righteous. Apart, I believe, I believe exactly what our Jesus said, what our Lord Jesus said in John 15, 5. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bear much fruit. For without me, what did he say? You can do nothing. And I have written that on my heart because I believe it with all of my heart. Apart from him, I can do nothing. And he is so good. And I pray you would surrender your life to him. And I want to pray for you right now. Father, we love you so much. I, I lift up every single person listening to this right now. I pray that you bless them. I pray that you speak to them. I pray that we would draw near to you so that you would draw near to us. And I pray that we would understand what you teach us about your holy word, that it is theanustas, that you have given this to us through special revelation and it's God breathed and we need to surrender to you, God, surrender to your word, and be doers of your word and not hearers only. I pray that you would move with power in the lives of those watching. And we love you. And I lift up those who are going through seasons of sickness or, or going through different battles and, and, and those who really want to be uh, in church but can't for whatever reason. I pray for a special blessing on them. Strengthen them, God. And I pray that uh, they will soon be able to to join their church family and fellowship and worship together. And I thank you for those that are healthy that can do that now. Let us not forsake the assembly, God. I pray that we would seek you with all of our hearts. I pray that you'd fill us with your Holy Spirit and guide us every day. We love you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. I love you and may God bless you. And I will see you next time.